All right, my beautiful people. So today we're talking about uh, writing a paragraph. And I know it's something we talked about before, but let's dig a little bit deeper. So what is a paragraph? Well, a paragraph is a, it has one topic with a collection of sentences that are related to that topic. Usually when you're reading something, if someone wants to turn, wants to turn off the light, you can. You guys can't see me. Thank you. So typically when you're reading a text, there are more than one paragraph. And so each paragraph starts on a new line and each new paragraph is about a new idea or it's an expansion on the main idea, but it carries new information with it, okay? So each paragraph, no matter how long or short it is, it expresses a new idea. Cool? Yeah? Okay. So a paragraph is a group of sentences that revolve around a central idea, which means there's one main idea and every sentence in that paragraph talks about that idea. With that said, um, it contains a topic sentence and supporting details and a concluding sentence. So every paragraph has a topic sentence, it has supporting ideas, and it has a concluding statement or a concluding sentence. What are the key elements? So these are the things that stand out. The topic sentence is the first sentence in the paragraph, typically, and it provides the main idea. That first sentence tells us what the entire paragraph is about. And the second thing that it has is the sentences after the topic center, a sentence, and before the final sentence are supporting details that give more information about the topic uh, sentence, okay, about the main idea. So it adds information to it so that your reader can better understand the idea that you're trying to tell us. Cool? Yeah? All right. We have this method and it's called the hamburger paragraph. Now the hamburger paragraph is uh, pretty cool because it breaks it down as if it's a hamburger. And I'll show you another example, which will make it a lot, sentence, uh, a lot better. So the first sentence and the last sentence are basically the bun because they're almost the same, okay? So the top and the bottom in a hamburger, they taste the same, they're the same. Cool, but slightly different. So the top part is the topic sentence. And this sentence tells the reader the main idea or what the paragraph will be about. The second part is the stuffing. So then you have the, like the cheese or the tomatoes or whatever, whatever you're adding on top of your burger then you have the burger, then you have more of lettuce or whatever, right? That's usually how you make a burger. You put the bun and then you put things on top of the burger, below the burger, and then you put it inside the, uh, uh, inside the bread. You sandwich it. So essentially you have the topic sentence, you have supporting sentence. So supporting sentence one, this sentence gives specific details relating to the, sec uh, to the main idea. Supporting sentence two, this sentence gives another idea or another specific idea detailing uh, detail relating to the main idea. So they're different ideas, right? They're not the same. They're two different ideas. And finally, supporting sentence three, this sentence gives more specific details relating to the main idea. Sentence one, two, and three are different ways of supporting the main idea. Yes? Make sense? And then finally, we have the concluding sentence, which this sentence refers to the topic sentence, sentence and sums up the main idea in the paragraph. This goes takes us back to the beginning. It closes everything because 
when you're, if you've ever noticed, when you're talking to someone, you start off talking about something and then you end up talking about something else, right? Yes, we've all done this. But when we're writing, even when we're talking sometimes to someone, we want to come back to the main idea. That way we're not completely off track so that we are still in the same bubble. Does that make sense? So the, the, the opening sentence or the main sentence and the last sentence are almost the same or talk about the same thing because we're bringing that person full circle back. We don't want to leave them out in the space, right? To float around with their thought. We want to bring them to the central idea. Does that make sense? Yes? No? Maybe? How are we feeling? Questions? You guys don't ask me questions. I can't help you. So what does the writing allow us to do? We talked a little bit about this the other day. But writing essentially allows the students to express their thoughts, their feelings, perspective in an organized way. Now, I know you know a lot of words in English, but they're all over the place in your brain. Writing takes these words and puts them into organized sentences, which means that typically if you become a better writer, you also become a better speaker. So the better you become at writing, the more organized your thoughts become, the more you have the ability to express, to say, to explain how and what you are feeling or how and what you're thinking or your thoughts on a particular topic. So when we're talking about express your feelings, we're not saying I feel sad today. You can be talking about the rocket launch that we saw the other day. That's what that was right? So you could be talking about that and you can be expressing your thoughts and feelings about that. So we're not talking about emotions here. We're talking about the thought, the mind, okay? Which is why writing is so important. It organizes our thoughts. The better we get at it, the more we're able to say what we want to say, the way we want to say it, and choose the right words that fit in that category. Now, how is it structured? Well, again, we have the topic sentence, we have supporting sentences, and then we have concluding uh, sentences. So that is your paragraph in a nutshell. Now, what we're gonna take a look at is this exercise. Oh, not this exercise, the other one. Also one more. Mm, sorry. There it is. My little hamburger. All right, so you guys can open this on your canvas or you can write something like it here in your, um, on your notebook or wherever you're writing notes, okay? What we're gonna do right now is we are going to not write the paragraph, but we're going to organize it. We're going to organize a paragraph, okay? So last time I believe we talked about something we are grateful for, yeah? So we can stick with that same topic, let me see. Let me look at the... prompt. Or actually, let me pull one of these questions. What are some healthy ways to express anger? That's what we're going to talk about, okay? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. All right. So what we're gonna be talking about, uh, 
Okay, we can see all of it. There we go. So what we're going to be talking about is what do we say? Ah, what are some ways to manage anger? Is that what we said? What are some effective ways to manage anger? Okay. That is what our paragraph is going to be about. Now, we're not going to write the paragraph. We are just going to think about it and organize it so that when we do want to write it, it is easier to write. Okay? Yeah? So help me. What's our topic? What's my topic sentence? Effect exactly. So again, we're not writing the sentence right now. We're just organizing it. We are going to talk about effective ways to manage anger. That's it, right? Because that's what that question is asking us. Right? Yes, maybe? Okay. So now help me out. What do you think are effective ways to manage anger? And why? Give me ideas. What would, if you are angry, what would you do to manage anger? Going outside and pray that or Okay, so going outside and what breathing breathe breathing okay so that is deep, deep, uh, breathe. all right we're gonna put a slash taking deep breath okay so now that is detail number one now can we say why why is that good when you're going outside, you breathe, uh, take a deep breath. It, it makes you like breathe more oxygen in your uh, brain. Add, add oxygen to the brain. I don't need to write the full sentence, right? I just want to talk. All right, so someone else, give me another idea. How, what's a good way of managing anger? Daily what? Payment. Payment? Um, For what? Saving. Uh, not payment, but be like motivation or saving time. Um, connect them for me because they're not connecting yet. Saving time for the patient. So having more time to relax? Yeah. Okay. So doing exercise? Exercise. Let's go with exercise. So time setting aside time to exercise. Okay. So now I need to know why. Why is setting a time aside time to exercise helping you manage anger? Okay. Exercise uh, reduces stress. Okay. Now another idea. Tell me why again. <laughs> Listen to music. Yeah. Listen to music. How is that helpful or why? What do you guys think? What happens when you listen to music? You don't think about the problem. So let's see that. Music helps shift focus from that problem. All right, and finally, we're looking for the concluding sentence. 
And again, what did we say? We're talking about what? Okay, effective ways to manage anger. So how do we bring it back? Huh? In summary. In summary, in conclusion, we can say that. Um, these are ways, these are three ways you can manage stress, okay? So now let's put it all together. Now that it, so let's start this way. Now that we broke it down, is it easier to see? Do you think it's gonna be easier to write it? All right, let's give it a try. So now we have, how should I start it? Now we wanna talk about ways, effective ways to manage anger. Someone help me start this sentence. We already have the idea, right? So give me a little help to write a sentence, write the first sentence for me. If we, uh, the, the first uh, way to manage your anger is, is uh, take a breath, put more oil on. That would be, that would be the, the supporting sentence, right? But now we want to start the paragraph. How should we start the paragraph? We have to introduce the topic. Can someone help me? Yeah. Or we can say, we can say this, right? Um, managing anger is very important, all right? There are a few ways you can put it in the same sentence. There, there are a few ways to do that. Yeah? So what's the first way? Okay, so put that in a sentence for me. We can put first. Well, we can put first, but let me ask you, are these three in order? No, so we're not gonna do first, second, and third, right? One way, right? One way to what? To manage, to effectively, we can use the same words, right? Manage anger is, but yeah, you can write the same stuff. By going outside, and taking a deep breath, deep breath for two minutes. Yeah, why is that important? We can give it more information, right? What does that do? Okay, so help me put that in a sentence. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna say that because it's a technique. That helps uh, that helps reduce anger by adding oxygen or allowing oxygen to flow to the brain. That's a better word. There we go, we wrote the first sentence, the topic sentence, and we added more information about it. Now help me write sentence number two. Also, or another way, another way of what? Anger is, is by exercising. Okay. 
what happens when we reduce anger? Uh, what happens when we when we uh, exercise? It reduces our stress. So now we can use the same words, right? When what we're we saying, setting time aside to exercise helps reduces reduce stress and that allows person to control their anger what else we're at detail number three right so help me write detail number three yeah, the last way, the last suggestion, oh. what is it, is to listen to music. What does music do? Music. Same thing, right? We can use the same thing. Focus. Shift focus from the problem to the result. Ultimately, because we're ending, right? Ultimately. What did we say the first thing is? What was the opening sentence? Right? Managing anger is very important. So we're going to go back and say what? Ultimately, it is essential to manage anger. Otherwise, what will happen? It will control the person rather than it will control the person. There we go. We wrote a paragraph, guys. What do you think? How are you feeling? So let's put it together. Let's read it all. Managing anger is very important. There are a few ways to do that. See? Topic sentence, topic sentence. One way to effectively manage anger is by going outside and taking a deep breath for two minutes. Going outside, taking deep breath. We can add things, right, to make it more dynamic, to help people understand better. Why is that? It help, That helps reduce anger by allowing oxygen to flow to the brain. Another way of reducing anger is by exercising. Setting time aside to exercise help us reduce, help, sorry, helps reduce stress that allows, and that allows the person to control their anger. The last suggestion, is to listen to music. Music helps shift focus from the problem to the rhythm. Ultimately, it is essential to manage anger, otherwise it will be out of control or it will control the person. Cool? How are we feeling? You guys doing okay? Are you ready to try it on your own? Or what the conclusion? That is the conclusion. Huh? What's the question? Let's start in a multiplying sensation, one inch anger, otherwise it will be from the person. That's the conclusion. That's the conclusion because the beginning was managing anger is very important. Right? So essential means important to manage anger. And then we say why. Yeah? Does that make sense? Are you guys ready to try it on your own? Yes. All right. Let us, let me give you, oops. So we're going to stop recording and then you guys get to try it on your own and then we'll put it together.